You don't want to keep everybody waiting here longer than necessary. You be quiet over there. Sometimes you got to tell your partners to just zip it. Hello, everybody. We are starting our, our live streaming on Facebook. And so I'm going to be with all of you here and on Zoom first. So first, I want to say thank you. Hello. Thank you. We are on live. Okay. <laughs> I'm not always just corralling people, but we will try tonight. So I want to thank everybody, especially the authors who are online, who are here in person. And I really want to make sure that the people who buy these books, who are reading your stories, as an author, it's not easy to write our stories. Some people, this is their first story that they've shared with the world. And it is scary to put our stories out there, to be vulnerable, and to let people know that there's a better way. Everybody is going through something. When we share our story, we resonate with other people and we let other people know that there's another way. If we all lived in a white picket fence, we wouldn't have learned what we needed to learn. I never would have learned about energy and how important tapping into your own energy and how important that is. So once we go on our own healing journey, we're able to say thank you <laughs> that we're on the other side. And every author in this book has an awesome story to share. And they learned important tools that are now helping other people to heal. So really take your time as you read each story. And if there's one that resonates with you, then reach out to that author and get to know them because you have the power in your hand to heal yourself, no matter what you're going through. And tonight, I'm very happy to be able to introduce these authors to you and your community. So this is our fabulous book. If you're here or if you haven't gotten it, if you're online, share it. If you're here in person, get an autograph from these amazing people. And so we're going to go around the room and I'm going to introduce these wonderful people to you. And I start out this awesome book. My chapter is on inherited energy, how to clear a path to abundance and ease in life. And I talk about how ancestral energy really changed my life and took it on a different course and how it's helping so many people change their lives to become authentically who they are. Next up is chapter two, Michelle Clifton, who's a master sound healer and teacher and licensed massage therapist. Instant bliss, sound healing with Tibetan singing bowls. Michelle, do you wanna unmute? Oh, hi there. This is our wonderful book. Hi everyone. It, I'm just so honored to be here. I'm so honored to be part of this book. And there's so many fabulous stories in this book. It, um, I suggest that anyone who doesn't have it yet, get it, give it to your friends for Christmas and the holidays, birthdays. It's really a wonderful, wonderful book. Um, and I have one of my bowls here that I thought um, you can just hear a little bit of it. And I 
I do. My husband's here with me. Those of you who haven't met him before, his name is Chuck. So he came to the party too here. So uh, these are some of my fellow authors and friends. Glad to meet you all. Yeah. So it's uh, really, really great to be here. And this is one of my bowls. I teach how to play this bowl. And I also do sound baths and meditation. And um, my uh, website is sonicbowls.com. If you want to learn about bowls or just come to some of my virtual events or I do in-person events, uh, just get in touch with me. They're transformative. So, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. It was just uh, great to be here and have lots of fun. Thank you, Michelle. We're having a little technical difficulty. I'm not sure if we're live, but we'll get there. Um, so chapter three is Erica Dworkin. She's a board certified holistic nutritionist and wellness guide. She, her chapter is midlife and menopause mapping your path to empowerment. Hi everyone. So as Jackie said, I'm Erica Dworkin. I'm board, a board certified holistic nutritionist and a wellness guide. And I too brought my life partner, Paul, so he's, he's with us uh, at the party here in person. Say hi, everybody. So um, for, I grew up in the holistic and natural medicine arenas. And for many years, I worked with, with women to help them in midlife and menopause to get through a variety of symptoms and I felt called to write my chapter, um, which I was very nervous about because I don't normally talk about myself, um, to let people know that, let women know that you're not alone. And there is support out there for you to not only get through menopausal symptoms, but to really shine to let out your menopausal goddess and enter the age of wisdom with power and strength and as, as a better, stronger woman than you were in your youth. That's the journey that, that I took. It's the journey that I speak about in my, um, in my, in my short chapter. And I really hope that you'll reach out to me if, you are, if you're experiencing any menopausal symptoms, my tool will enable you to identify your limiting beliefs, what I call impeding beliefs, and help you determine whether there are also supporting beliefs about mid midlife and menopause, because that's the starting point. And once you experience the first step in my chapter, the first essential mapping tool, you will then be able to start walking steps two through five, which you can get free from my, from my website, which is vitathenawellness.com. And if you didn't catch that, buy the book and you'll see it at the end of the chapter. And I really look forward to your contacting me. Have a beautiful holiday season and make sure you get our book. It makes a fabulous gift. We have some amazing healers in this book and you don't wanna miss out. Thank you, Erica. Next is chapter seven, Sandra Lee, licensed massage therapist and biofeedback specialist. Is that what the S is? <laughs> Biofield tuning. Tuning, sorry. Her chapter is being seen, light up the heart of who you are. So writing my chapter in this amazing book was a transformative experience for me. And I think many of the authors might say that this was a journey that changed their lives writing the chapter in the book. In my case, it really had me recognize the importance of connections between people and how much they mean to me and have for my entire life. And so I really focused on this whole issue of being seen and I created this concept I call shine. So it's like 
when I am with another person and I see you and you see me and it's just like, you know, this bond, this connection that is formed. I, I started to recognize that when that happens, it's like that person glows, they shine. Like saints, you know, they have that halo around them. You and I do that. And so when I, when I come from myself, when I see you, when you see me, we have that, that shine experience. And so writing this chapter really had me pull that all together. And that has become really a central part of my daily life, such that I created a card deck in our gem shine that, that capitalized on that. And I've been, you know, marketing these two together. It's about being myself and allowing other people to really be yourselves and, and being seen. And I, I do do biofield tuning. So using tuning forks and sound for healing in the energy field. Thank you, Sandra. And she's amazing. Definitely read her chapter. Um, and she's worked really hard on those cards. So chapter eight, my good friend, Carolyn McGee, the decision queen, sacred haven living expert. My journey to me, learning to trust my angels and intuition. Thank you, Jackie. Um I have written in many collaboration books, and I believe that my some of my best work is in this book. <laughs> it I really stepped into me. The title is perfect, My Journey to Me. I owned my connection with the, the angels. I owned my connection with intuition. I owned my connection with energy healing and energy medicine. And it all came together. It crystallized so that I could step forward and be really authentic and allow other people to shortcut, shortcut the long journey that I had <laughs> getting to be me. And um, I just love this book. I love the energy of it um, being authentic and really stepping into empowerment and the energy of healing. You know, we're in this space now in the world where we need to be authentic. We need to be true to ourselves. We need to look at all versions of healing it's not Eastern, it's not Western, it's what's best for the individual and, and own that and become empowered. So I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful to be part of this um, life-changing book, this movement. And you can find out more about me at carolynmcgee.com. Thank you, Jackie, for inviting me to be part of this life-changing experience. You are so welcome and thanks for being here. Next is chapter 10, Secrets Revealed, Your Life is a Meditation by Ed Cleveland, Reiki Master Teacher, Zeldin Gong Master, Neuroacoustic Sound Therapist, Master Teacher. Hello everyone, <laughs> hope you're having a great night. <laughs> I'm chapter 10, um, you're life as a daily meditation. And what I like to do is uh, work on with my practice, which is in Hartford, Connecticut, is to work with people on how to get out of the left brain where all your challenges are and all the overthinking and go into the right brain of the feelings and the emotions, which helps dissolve a lot of the focus on the challenges and the problems. As in uh, a lot of the uh, ailments people have 75 is said to be that 75% of them are created in the human brain. So as a neuroacoustic sound therapist, working with people to do ambient sounds, to do different work in a uh, meditation in more of a mindful way is to have that transition from that side of your brain to the other side of what is the sound? What does the sound feel like? 
and it really works uh, in many different ways. Uh, one of the ways with uh, your eyes closed is that your brain will actually search the database history of your life to try to give that sound a name. And that's what the gift is, because in that side of your brain, there's no problems. So in my chapter 10, um, I have different exercises and different examples of how you can make your shower, meditation, uh, doing different things. But every part of your life is actually a walking meditation. I'm in a live meditation right now with all these beautiful, wonderful people. This is a beautiful present time experience. That is just a, a wonderful gift. And I'm very honored to be here. I thank you, Jackie, very much. I also have CDs. <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you, Ed. Um, chapter 13, my good friend, Denise M. Simpson. Being ditzy is divine healing in action. Tapping into 5D energy for healing. Oh, I'll mute. It helps to unmute. So yeah, I'm Denise Simpson and I'm the Courageous Heart Coach through my journey in spiritual development. Tapping the emotional freedom technique literally saved my life. And along the way, I found out how to heal enough trauma so that I could open my heart, discover my courage, build my confidence, and then enjoy easier success coaching clients to heal their trauma, life empowerment, as well as coaching them to write their stories, to make an impact and leave a legacy. This book is so empowering and it's so transformative. And the title's a little bit tongue in cheek, cheek, being ditzy is divine healing. You know, that the, my whole story came from an, an insult, a little criticism of, oh, my husband thinks you're so ditzy. And you know what? I have learned to own the fact that if somebody's going to judge me as being ditzy, it's because they don't understand five-dimensional healing. He was looking at surgery, which is 3D everyday healing, right? So that's how I got my book chapter. But I'll tell you, I am a much happier, stronger, more joyful person after having explored the healing modalities that were regular run of the mill and the more I got into four and five D healings, the quantum field manifestation, law of attraction, evolutionary mystic med meditation, tapping so many hip uh, hypnosis. I'm a certified hypnotist as well as uh, certified in about six other modalities. Um, and I've got two masters. I used to be a traditional marriage and family therapist. And it's like, no, I'm a life coach now because these ways of healing that are beyond the traditional are what are working for today's world. We are in the fourth wave, wave of energy psychology. So it really is about the body, mind, heart, and soul and being able to master your mind state so that you can create the flow state and manifest easier. So my tool in the back of the book is about the brainwave states. A lot of people don't understand that. And, but if you do, there's some good information. And find me on Denise M. for Marie Simpson.com. So this is a movement. This will help. And we need this healing. We need this healing beyond surgeries, beyond drugs and pharmaceuticals with side effects. So let's do this. So glad to be here together with everyone. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Chapter 14, healing with her herbs and tea, preventative solutions for wellness before and after COVID by Vera Helena, licensed massage therapist and certified Chinese herbalist. Hi everyone, hope you're doing good tonight. Yes, this book is amazing and you can see all of us are continuing our education, right? We all wanna learn more and more and more. And that's kind of how I got into the herbalism. I had a lot of people coming to me doing the body work. I'd have them for an hour. Then I sent them away for a month and they came back the same. They had high blood pressure, different things that were going on that I could help during the session, but not, you know, throughout the day to day. So I became an herbalist so I could send them home with some herbs. 
uh, what tended to happen were people were on so many medications that they were afraid of herbs and they never learned about herbs. So I, you know, had to teach them somehow and I became um, really interested in making tea. And tea was a thing that I could basically cross a lot of boundaries with. And I found, you know, people would learn little things about the medicine. And if it had ginger in it, oh, I knew about ginger. Oh, I know about cinnamon. You know, all these different things that I could continue the conversation with. So I created a tea company. Um, my particular chapter talks about different things from my past and also where we are now with COVID. Um, you know, we are like, there's six more strains of it going on. So we have to continue to build our immune system and work with these herbs because you can only take so much of the antibiotics and you know the prednisone and, and all that kind of thing that they, they keep putting us on. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of herbs that target different areas in our body and I teach that. I have a space in Stonington called Auntie Barry's Cafe. They called me Auntie Barry because I actually helped my niece who had some severe allergies. And we just worked with tea and, and local honey. So I expanded that and I manifested a shop where I can sit down and have tea with you and treats. And we're eventually going to have um, some events there in a couple of weeks. We have Denise and mm -hmm, you're coming. Yeah. Um, and Mandy. Yeah. Um, okay. No, Mandy's coming to the other one. Sorry. All right. So whoever comes, just show <laughs> up. But it, I'll be there. And yeah, and I'll come. I'll do a, a weekly Friday, and I'm going to try to get it online as well. Um, uh, uh, talks with Auntie Barry. <laughs> so um, I'd be like delighted to see you. Um, you. And you can go on my site, connect with me there at Auntie A U N T Y Barry B E R R Y dot com. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Chapter 16, The Healing Power of Feng Shui, You Have the Magic Inside by Pat McGrath. Hi, some people I know, some people I don't know. <laughs> nice seeing you. Um, Hi, Beth. Hey, Joyce, how are you? I'm good. Good. So um, <coughs> at my age, I have a lot of stories and I have a lot of um uh, experiences that I have used energy to um, get on the other side of. But the reason I spoke about or wrote about feng shui is because this is the first modality that I learned about energy. And what I tell people when they start and begin to study energy, what they're learning is vocabulary for something that they already know. A lot of people don't see their space or don't understand that we have a relationship with our space. You think of relationships as people but everything you walk by every single day, you have a relationship with. And so my job is to help people with their space and to raise awareness to what's actually happening using the principles of feng shui, but also the energetic experience of decluttering and spiritual counsel helps me guide myself to the right um, recommendations. And then it's, everyone's free will to make the decision to follow those suggestions or not. But the whole point is to use your space as a feeling of support. And um, I get into this, well, I studied this in 2000 and we, our class went for almost a whole year and we got out about a month and a half before 9-11. And when we were studying, the teachers that we had were from all over the world. They told us something big was about to happen. They didn't know what it was, but they said the earth was going to be evolving from material to energetic. So here I am 20 years later in Jackie's book <laughs> talking about energy. And uh, so in other parts of the world, uh, they see energy as chi or prana or ki. In our culture, we don't have the that vocabulary. So a big part of understanding our space and understanding the energy of our space is about figuring out what vocabulary works for people. So feng shui is a feeling thing. It's not a thinking thing. It's how do you feel in your space? How are the things that you 
have in your environment affecting you. If during the stories that I hear when I'm working with people, they tell me a story about a particular item that has negative memories, then I have the vocabulary to teach them that the negative energy coming off of that object is not really supporting them. And there's all kinds of reasons why people hang on to things. What I'm finding out is that, especially if it's objects that they've inherited from family members, they can't let it go because they feel judged, even if the people have crossed over. So that's when the spiritual counseling comes into um, play. So there's so much to this and there's limitless ways to look at our space. Say for instance, if you had noticed a house and five different owners, they'd set it up all different ways because feng shui is really about the people. It's how the individual relates to their space individually. So there are no shoulds. And a lot of people set up their spaces because they think they should have something in the dining room or they should have something on the wall. And when it turns out we talk about it, it has no meaning. So feng shui really is about setting up space for meaning and purpose. And that's about it. And I love to say, when I first met Pat, <laughs> she said, I do feng shui, but I don't tell anybody. Little did she know I was going to tell everybody that she was awesome at it and she should keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> She's dragging me into the electronic world. <laughs> Kicking and screaming. Yes. Um, chapter 19, universal white time, leveraging the power of divine light and love for authentic healing and awakening by Bradford W. Tilden, composer, vibrational healer, and so much more. So much more. I'm gonna see if I can orient this to- Oh, sure. Well, no, it's not gonna work. I wanna kind of have this I be an inclusive thing. Uh, all, right, all right, profile, profile. <laughs> Hi, everyone online. Hi, everyone in person. Hi. <laughs> so I'm gonna be right here, all right? So that's profiles, okay. So, yes, uh, my name is Bradford Tilden. Uh, my, my business is called Crystal Music Healing. Uh, but really, I, I came here uh, with a mission. And I believe everyone incarnated on this planet with a higher purpose. And most people, uh, I get like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? I get so many people coming in wanting to know their purpose. And I think that the way to discover your purpose is to completely trust in yourself and trust in the universe and uh, listen to your, to your intuition. So uh, when Jackie uh, asked me to participate, I went like this little gremlin hands uh, because I, I saw it as an opportunity to educate the world about the existence of this phenomenal uh, healing modality called universal white time. And it, I didn't know it existed, but it called to me. And the, the story of how I was led to it was so extraordinary. That's what I wrote my chapter about. But I also wrote my chapter about hope, um, in the face of adversity, um, just just faith and, and trust in the universe. And uh, so I decided to start my chapter on the day that my worst fear uh, came to life. And just today, I was working, I, I met this client who had read my chapter. She just started to read my chapter. And she said, Brad, those opening lines were so relatable. Thank you so much. You put me at ease, so much anxiety was released and it, it took me aback and I got emotional. I told myself I wouldn't get emotional right now, but like to hear that my words of my most vulnerable moment in my life have you know, helped to inspire someone because I really did come here to inspire people, to, to educate people and to activate people because we are more than we think we are and the energies of the world are revving up to a conscious ascension to something greater. And that's really what Universal White Time centers its education around. It gives you the tools and the ability to connect with this very strong uh, source of energy that comes into our universe and it helps foster our, our consciousness and our healing and our well being. And uh, my mission is really to guide people to the next step of who they are. And when you have uh, this awakening, the, the healing and, and moving from pain to uh, awareness that happens almost as a byproduct of when you step into your power, because suddenly it's a joy. The process of healing becomes a joy. Going to that yoga class is a joy. It's not, I have to, because my back hurts. It's just this different way of looking at things. So 
uh, check out my chapter 19. And I teach classes here and, and there and everywhere. So if you're interested in white time healing, reach out to me. And I do have a class next weekend here. And I would like people to enroll in it so I can take you down the journey of a lifetime. All right. Anyway, thank you, Jackie. He travels for his I classes travel too, for all class. over the world. Uh, um, okay. I'm going to reorient it again. Well, uh, for a little bit, for you, yes. Hey, Jackie. Brad is... Is is his class online as well as live in the center? Oh, what a great question, Denise. Well, the the um, the woman that um, uh, has offered white time to the world, she's working on creating an online version of it, and it has to do with the initiations. The energy has to be right, or the initiations won't uh, hold. So, okay. as of right now, there is no online component, unfortunately. But okay, that's a very good question. It's, it's coming. coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Chapter 23, Journaling, Healing Your Inner Critic with Compassion and Kindness by Mandy Pullenbar, Reiki Master Trainer, Sound Healer, Clarity Catalyst Coach. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I like, I, I'm just, I feel like I'm a little kid and I'm playing at the, like with the grownups and it's like, it has just been so exciting. And I think that the biggest thing for me about this whole project is that my family and friends have read my chapter and they're like I had no idea and it's like reliving it all over again and but not from a place of pain even though it makes me emotional but from a place of peace knowing that like my I was brave enough as you know Laura says you know we're our brave words to um speak about things that aren't normally spoken about. And um, I just want to thank you so much, Jackie, for, um, you know, picking me to be part of the the team. And, it, and it's just been such an amazing journey. And my incredible husband, yeah. <laughs> who, um, you know, for weeks, you know, was listening to me read the chapter over and over again. He's like, okay, yeah, it's good. It's better. That's better. So um, I love the book. This this is great. I love everything. Everything that you guys are saying is like right down our alley, my alley, and and it's really interesting. It's this is great. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> you guys did a great job. Yeah, and um, I'm just I'm so glad that I was able to um, you know share my words and share uh, the the tool that helped me um, get my inner critic under control and, um, be able to deal with those, um, you know, negative, that negative self-talk and that self-sabotaging behavior that, um, you know, for, for years I struggled with and, um, you know, being able to put it on paper and share it with others and, um, hoping that other people will find relief from the tool, um, as, you know, is my hope. So thank you. Thank you, Mandy, for saying yes. Chapter 24, Divine Bubble of Protection, Gratitude and Grieving by Sunshine Lane. Hello, everybody. So happy to be here. Thank you so much. I feel honored and privileged to, um, first of all, Sandra, yes, thank you, and Jacqueline, meeting you and being approached by um, being in this amazing, empowering, enlightening, life-changing book. And um, as you know, we individually worked on it and then came together and everybody here were, you know, I've gotten to know them and I love where their heart is and where their intention is. And I feel that everything that they do is coming from pure love and pure acceptance um, to realize that, you know, um, there is more than what we've been conditioned to believe and think, and we are very empowered to heal ourselves. Um, I'm a medium and I'm a spiritual soul coach, and I have been opened ever since birth and um, when I wrote my chapter, it was something that was recently uh, just experienced for myself and something that my family had went through. And when I wrote, I was raw, vulnerable, and um, 
it was very healing for me um, to share. And what I wrote about too was also a rebirthing that um, I was experiencing. And everything that, you know, we're all divine souls here having a human experience. And we're here to love and heal, to evolve our soul while here. And um, we're all very empowered. And we have been conditioned by society and stuff only to think of the physical because it's scientifically proven or it, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can see it. Well, we have other bodies and systems, right? And when we hear about being balanced or harmonized, it's about all those different bodies and systems. But we have been trained and conditioned to only think of that one physical body and focus on that. And that takes away our empowerment because we have other bodies. We have our physical, we have our emotional, we have our mental, we have our spiritual, and we have ether bodies. And all of those bodies, even those that physical is energy. We are energy. And energy is completely always changing. It's always in flow. It's always in movement. So if we were, if we're energy, we cannot remain the same. That's keeping us small. It's keeping us tiny. It's keeping us comfortable, but it's holding us back from who we really are. And um, this book is an, like, there's actually no words for it because you get to have right in your hands access to people's personal stories that have been on this journey for a very long time and, or maybe started their journey and they're sharing that with you and then tools. So you're accessing many different healing modalities. You're accessing things that can change your life. Throughout this book, there's going to be something that people can relate to in every chapter, right? So um, yes, I just love the book. I'm very honored that the universe has um, put us together. And I really, really believe on everything that is in this book. I am just going to read, even though I mentioned it a little bit, um, my chapter does talk about, again, we are divine, unique souls here. We all come from the same place. We're all equal. And um, we're here to love and heal and to evolve our soul. And we all illuminate each other. So that is pretty empowering, right? We are never alone. We are completely always supported. Right? What? If we're stuck and we just allow our physical body to run the whole show and all our other bodies and systems, we can become stuck. If we, um, you know, have experiences and we only know of the physical body and we're not moving and shifting things constantly, even as one feeling, that's what causes the dis-ease in our flow and can turn into disease. So it's energy, it might feel invisible, but hey, what, what is there to lose by checking it out? Because it's the most amazing, incredible thing. Everything is energy. And the, you always have the divine, the God of your understanding, the universe completely supporting you. Oh my goodness, that's amazing and incredible. And it may seem invisible, but they're all there waiting, supporting you, and you can tap into it. It's all up to you. So sending everybody lots of love. I love you. And just know you're never alone. You're always completely divinely protected. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sunshine. And so we're, gonna, we're about to finish up. I'm just going to read one more thing. The day of the book launch, some of you here are intuitive and sometimes we get what I call downloads and messages, right? So this was the message that I received in the shower because I have guides in my shower, believe it or not. I know everybody does, so don't 
say it's just me. And I had to end my shower to write this down. So the intention of this book is to create a movement into a new healthcare system where the power of healing is put back into the hands of the person in the, of the person. It's time to let every human being know that they don't have to suffer anymore, that they are powerful human beings who can and are in charge of their own lives. Each one of us has everything you need inside of you to create the abundant life you desire and crave for. The missing link that no one is talking about is energy, your personal energy, and how something happened to take you off course of believing you are enough and of cor off course of knowing your own inner strength. That thing that took you off course could be, many times can be coming from your mom's guilt that you took on at an early age or your dad's financial problems that were never resolved, your grandmother's anxiety or that scared part of yourself that was never taught that you are amazing. You, we were all conditioned to be a certain way. We can't avoid the conditioning. This book gives you the tools to begin the process of undoing that conditioning. When you release the old conditioned way of being, you then get to be you, the real you. We want to get to know the real you. When every human being is living their authentic life, then we will each achieve peace on earth. Thank you. So I would really love to have all the authors come up here and we're gonna take a group picture even with those online. Oh, I see. So the, the, the monitor is going to be in the picture. Yes. I don't see. Well, I've got my arm around all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sneak behind oh, here. Okay. Smile, everybody. Look like you're having fun. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're on candid camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. You got a good one. Did you get your picture, huh? Thank you, everybody. We will be sending those pictures out. Thank you. Thank you. We Bye. miss you. Wish you yeah. were here. One day we'll see all those people from Canada and all over. Bye, everybody. Bye now. Bye. Yeah, that was Who is that in the left?